All right, we're gonna discuss experiment six, the addition and resolution of vectors, uh, the force table. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we just studied vectors, so this is a good lab to perform, uh, to reinforce some of these uh, ideas that, that you've just learned in uh, chapter three. So uh, this is the experiment. You, of course, you do the advanced study assignment uh it's nine questions uh then i want you to read the introduction and the objectives uh the equipment needed the the only equipment that you need is a protractor a ruler um and you know some sheets of uh graph paper uh for drawing um I, everything else i i performed the experiment myself and uh did the experimental portion of it so i want you to read the theory it's it, it should be reviewed to you uh so uh the uh but i want you to read it just the same now uh, they, they cover three ways and we're gonna we're gonna in this experiment we're gonna handle three ways of uh coming up with a resultant and the first way is a graphical method where you actually draw the vectors and and come up with the resultant you do the head to tail method uh or i think they talk about the parallel uh, uh maybe they don't talk about the parallel method but a head to tail method uh so you you can have a graphical method which i want you to do and you, then you're going to do a an analytical method uh which i want you to do and i'll do the experimental uh so um read all this this is the act this is the vector table this is kind of the closest one that that uh we use i i didn't uh, uh i didn't know i don't ever show it to you for, from a view like this it's always uh, from a bird's eye view i thought that was the best way to, to display what was going on um for for this experiment but these are these are kind of like the ones that we use uh and uh so the uh, a new word here is the equilibrant you're going to use the when when you have f1 and f2 this is the resultant well the equilibrant is the exact uh size this exact magnitude of the resultant but in the opposite direction so that when you put f1 and f2 on a vector table they they uh, feel like this resultant in order to balance it out you have to put the equilibrium uh, okay so then we get into the experimental procedure and you can see uh, they tell you set it up and then you have vector addition one so you do the graphical in part a you do the analytical in part b and you do and i did the experimental in part c so i've done all the experimentals it's up to you to do the graphical and the uh, analytic uh, for each of these cases. And I think there's about six cases. And I'm gonna go through the, uh, uh, well, let's just look, there's vector edition one, vector edition two, vector edition three, vector resolution, so that's really a fourth one, uh, vector edition uh, four, and vector edition five. It says optional, it's not optional for you. I want you to, uh, do that procedure i told you that i would let you know when things were optional this one is not optional uh you have to turn it in uh for full credit okay so the, the, here's the laboratory table you're going to fill out uh values here uh and uh then there's the questions that you have to answer uh, and there's a l even little uh problem for you to do so so you turn in the whole uh thing now let's let's go to a new share uh and uh let's go to my ipad it takes a while and there we go so this is this is the very first vector edition and you can see i've already populated it with with some answers because i've already done uh done this portion uh but we have uh oh what the, what, oh 
one thing, there, there's a note on, uh, let me, you'll still see this. You won't see my, uh, I'm not going to change the share, but there's a note on uh, uh, page. Uh, actually, I can show it on here um, without having to, to switch. Let's zoom in on this. Um, let's go back to back to meeting. Hello. Okay. The magnitude of the weight for the the magnitude of the force vectors is in general given in the form R equals mg equals zero point one five zero uh, gn. What does that mean? That's uh, zero point one five uh, kilograms. G is the gravitational acceleration, and n is newtons. Um, so this is an example where it is understood that the mass is in kilograms and g is the acceleration due to gravity. I and just I would call this 150 grams. So the g is not grams. The g is the uh, this g here. Uh, let me put this g is not grams. That's nine point. You know that's a messy nine. Nine point eight meters per second. The meter, meters per second squared. That's what the G is. It's not grams. But I'm going to be calling out everything in grams. It's just easier uh, to understand it that way. Okay, so let's, uh, now that we've gotten that, let's um, get to where I want to get to. Um, and that's this part. So this, uh, I'll get down there. Um, the very first addition is F1 is 200 grams at 30 degrees and F2 is 200 grams at 120 degrees. So the graphical method, you just draw it out. So you can, you, this is F1, this is F1 here, um, and this is F2, and we, uh, if you use the head to tail method, you can, you can reproduce this one over here and using the head to tail method, you'll come up with the result at R and you measure that um, and measure the angle. That's why you need a protractor and you come up with uh, 285 uh, units at, at 75 degrees. Um, so draw it big. Don't, don't just draw a little, you know, one inch by one inch uh, plot, you, you won't be able to get the resolution that you need to do the graphical method. Uh, so that's the graphical method. You, you, you measure R, you measure the length and you measure its angle and you come up with a, a, a value. It doesn't, it, it probably won't necessarily be the, the value that you get in the uh, analytical method. That's, that's part of the experiment. That's part of the learning. Now let's do the analytical method. Now this circle here represents the uh, vector table. Uh, that's the vector table. And so we have uh, 200 grams at 30, 200 grams at 120. Um, so how do we resolve this into components? Well, uh, F1 in the X direction is 200 grams times cosine of 30, which is 173 grams. Um, the, uh, F1Y is 200 grams times the sine of 30, and that's uh, uh, 100 grams. Uh, sine of 30 is 0.5, so it's, it's half, of, half of it. Okay, so how do we get the components for F2? F2X is 200 grams times the cosine of 120. Uh, that's minus 100, gra 100 grams, and you can see it's, it is in the negative direction there, right? Uh, all right, and F2Y is 200 grams uh, sine of 120, which is 173 grams. Now, to get our X, you add the X value, so that's 173 grams plus a minus 100 grams, and you end up with 73 grams. Um, now, if you get the, the masses for RY, you get it's 100, 100 grams plus 173, that's 273 uh, 
for uh, the Ys. Now to get the magnitude, you get the, uh, uh, the square root of the sum of the squares, Rx squared plus Ry squared. So that's uh, point, uh, 73 grams squared uh, plus 273 grams squared. Take the square root of that and you come up with 283 uh, grams. Uh, now to get the angle, the, uh, you take the tangent inverse of the uh, Ry divided by Rx. And so the, the tangent inverse of uh, 273 grams divided by 73 grams, you get 75 degrees. And you can see that that is the same as our graphical method here. Uh, so the graphical method was, uh, we got a, a good angle on it. Okay, so that's how to do the analytical method. Now, uh, in order to help you, I've got a little portion of an Excel spreadsheet that now, uh, before I get to that, I encourage you to do this method, to do the analytical method by hand using your calculator um, or whatever computational method you use, uh, at least on a few of them. Do go through the anal analytical method, and I want you to show you show your work uh, that you've done this. But and the reason I encourage you to do this because Excel is a marketable skill. So if you can learn how to do these um, and do them well, that's that's a, a feather in your cap. So here I've got the uh, uh, vector addition. There's F1, 200 grams. At 30 degrees, the F2 is 200 grams at 120. And then I've got all these other values that I calculated. How did I calculate them? Well, here's A, the 173. How do you get that? Well, you take the mass cell times the cosine of the angle cell divided by 180 times pi. Why 180 times pi? Because the native angle in Excel is in radians. So this, uh, divided by 180 times pi will put it in radians which uh, if you just put in cosine of 30 it's going to interpret that as 30 radians and you're not going to get the correct answer so you need to take the angle cell uh, divided by 180 and multiply by pi so what does that look like you, there has to be an equals here i couldn't put an equals because then it would convert it into a formula so equals uh, b3 times cosine c3 divided by 180 times pi. You can see the uh, B3 is the mass, the C3 is the angle, so the, ma uh, the mass times the angle gives you 173 grams. Same with here, it's uh, B4 times the sine of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, uh, we're still working, um, the sine would be working over here, uh, so to get the x for for uh, for this it would be um, b4 times the cosine of uh, c4 uh, divided by 180 times pi. Okay. Now let's go on to b. That's just the sum of these two uh, fellows here, the start cell and the end cell. So d3 to d4, and that's how you get this. Uh, this sum, I use the same thing here, uh, only uh, E3 to E4. Now, how do you get the magnitude? Well, that's the square root of the X cell squared plus the Y cell squared. So what does that look like in the equation? It's equal square root uh, D5 squared uh, plus E5 squared. Here's D5 and here's E5. So it's just the, uh, the, the X squared plus the Y squared. Um, and you take the square root of it, and you get the you get this uh, uh, this value. Okay, and how do I get the angle? I use a tan two, uh, the x cell, comma the y cell. That says this is the x value, this is the y value. If you use a tan two, you'll always get the correct angle. Now it's going to return the angle in radians, so you want to divide by pi and multiply it by one eighty. Okay, here's some more uh, notes. Uh, make sure that there's an equal sign before each formula. I couldn't do it here because it would, it would, it, it, if I put an equal there, it it uh, interprets the interprets it, and and you couldn't see it. 
So you have to put an equals before each of these little, before each of these little uh, formulas here, uh, equal square root D5 uh, squared plus E5 squared. Um, so you need an equal, um, multiply by pi over 180 to convert from degrees to radians. 30 times pi divided by 180 is pi over six. It, that's equal to 0 0.524 radians. Uh, you multiply uh, by 180 over pi to convert from radians to degrees. It's going to return radians. You want it in degrees. So it's uh, 1.047 radians times 180 over pi. Is equal to, uh, that shouldn't be 188. That should be 180 uh, divided by 3.14. Um, and that comes out to 60 degrees. Okay, now I want to show you the difference between ATAN and ATAN2. Uh, ATAN, it, it's just the, uh, you put ATAN4 uh, divided by 3, and it gives you 53. It gives you minus 53 here. It gives you 53 here, and it gives you minus 53 here. But look at the real values if you use ATAN2. 53, 127 degrees, minus 127 degrees, and minus 53 degrees. So you have to be careful. You either have to know your quadrants real well and interpret it, interpret your answer, or you just use ATAN2. Um, so it's important to understand the difference between ATAN and ATAN2. ATAN doesn't know which component is positive or negative, so it will only return a value between 90 and minus 90. That's pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. You ATAN2, you put the X component and the Y component, X component comma Y component. ATAN2 knows the sign of each component, so it will return the correct angle. If you just use ATAN, uh, it is as shown up here, it'll it'll interpret this as minus 53 degrees. Um, when in actuality it it should be uh, 127 degrees. So that's just, if you're going to use XL, you need, you want to use the ATAN, ATAN2. What does ATAN stand for? Arc tangent, arc tangent 2. Uh, and I think that's uh, the end of the lecture. It's probably a pretty long one. I apologize, but I'll have a lot of information to give you. Okay.